neck pain, cervical disc herniation, and cervical radiculopathy. Cervical disc herniation occurs most frequently at C6, C7. It also can occur at C5, C6. The patient will complain of neck pain due to nerve root irritation with the pain radiating to the ipsilateral upper extremity. The patient may complain of numbness, parathesia, and weakness. Coughing, sneezing, and neck movements make the pain worse. Careful examination of the patient is important. Each nerve involved will show its effect on the motor power and on the sensation and reflexes. So if you have a C3, C4 bulge, that will affect C4 nerve root. That will give you some sensory deficit around the shoulder area as seen in the diagram. The diaphragm is supplied largely by C4, so it could affect the respiratory system. If you have a C4, C5 disc bulge, it can affect C5 nerve root, and this will affect sensation around the shoulder area. Also, the C5 will affect the biceps reflex, because the biceps reflex is primarily a C5. As regard the motor, the C5 will affect the deltoid power and the strength, and it could affect elbow flexion, which is C5 and C6. How about C5, C6 bulge or disc herniation? That definitely will affect C6 nerve root. It will affect the sensation at the index and the thumb, and you can see in the diagram to the right the area that's involved in C6 sensory deficit. How about the reflexes? The C6 is a brachioradialis reflex. How about the motor? C6 is wrist extension, the extensor carboridialis longus and previs. It's also elbow flexion, C5 and C6. How about C6, C7 bulge or disc herniation? It will affect C7 nerve root. The sensory in C7 will be the middle finger. The motor in C7 will be elbow extension, the triceps. It also will be wrist flexion and finger extension, assuming the shape of number 7. Reflexes. C7 is a triceps reflex. C6 is a brachioradialis reflex. C5 is a biceps reflex. How about disc herniation or disc bulge between C7 and T1? It will definitely affect C8 nerve root. The sensory area that will be affected will be the medial two fingers and the medial part of the forearm and you can see it here in the diagram. The motor power will be finger flexion. There is no reflex that can be tested for C8. How about disc herniation between T1 and T2? That will affect T1 nerve root. You can see the area of sensation that's affected on this diagram. The motor power will involve the interosseous muscles, abduction and adduction. The patient will not be able to spread the fingers or get them closer together. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.